Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of What If. We're going to tackle a big one today. What if Starflight had been hatched under the three moons? Now, this is a really hard one to work with because it's kind of a massive change, and it makes Starflight a little bit overpowered. However, I see it requested all the time, so what the people want, I guess. Our story begins on the brightest night, following Marosir as he brings a tiny black egg to the Talons of Peace. Marosir felt a tiny movement in the pouch slung around his neck. He grumbled under his breath. The egg had been wriggling for a while now. Obstinate thing insisted on being contrary, apparently. He wanted the Nightwing to hatch with the other dragonettes. It looked like the dragonette had other plans, though. Marsir dropped to a ledge on one of the mountains below, reluctantly drawing the egg out of the cloth sack. It was spiderwebbed with cracks already, and he couldn't risk harming the dragonette within. Everything relied on this tiny egg. He drew the egg out and set it on the ground, in the moonlight where he could see it. Backing away, he stretched out for a quick rest, cold gaze locked on the egg to make sure it didn't roll off the ledge or anything. Sure enough, a little black snout shoved through the shell, minute noises escaping the hatchling. The clumsy newborn fumbled and fell over, chirping as he got tangled in his own wings. Marosir watched, unmoving, as the dragonette tottered around in the shell bits for a moment, letting it extricate itself from the remnants of the eggs. Well, it was free enough by now. Scooping the dragonette back up, he ignored the frightened chirps as he deposited it in the pouch. Ugh. Now he'd have to hear the useless thing mewling for the entire rest of the flight. He grumbled to himself again and beat his wings quicker, trying to drown the distressing noises out. He'd be rid of the thing soon. Starflight wasn't like other dragonettes. When he'd first read the scroll about Nightwing powers, he'd been enthused. Awesome! No wonder he heard crazy voices in his head. Maybe he wasn't insane after all. The nightmares were still him, but at least the voices weren't. Those were his friends. Clay's thoughts were warm and friendly. So were Sunny's. Their minds weren't abrasive like kestrels or depressing like webs. Tsunami was loud from her mouth and her brain. Glory and Dune were silent but thoughtful. When he was little, everyone was loud. He could hear everyone in the cave all the time and his head always hurt. The dreams were worse when he was little too. He used to dream about snakes and a courtyard and flashing black stones, about fire over an ocean and fire inside a mountain. He dreamt about purple black dragons with flashing silver bracelets and huge towering monsters that snarled and chased him. Everybody had bad dreams. Starflight just had too wild an imagination. That's what Webb said. But as he got older, the dreams weren't so bad. Sometimes he dreamed about what they might have for dinner, or sometimes he dreamed about a blue, blue sky. The voices got quieter, too. Now he could only hear dragons right next to them, and it was only very clear if he touched them. Mostly he just felt their emotions. Starflight was sad sometimes, because everybody had cool powers. Tsunami could breathe underwater, Glory changed colors, Clay was huge, and Sunny was, well, perfect. But the only thing he had was his mind reading, and it didn't seem to be getting any stronger, just the opposite. But that was okay. Starflight didn't need cool powers, and he kind of liked the quiet. Then Marosir came to see them. Starflight didn't like him. He felt angry, angry, furious. And he didn't like them, and the Guardian Dragons didn't like him. But the really bad things happened after Marosir left. Kestrel chained Tsunami to the rocks, slithering out angrily. She didn't know much about Starflight's powers. He never talked about them to the Guardian Dragons, which was probably why she smacked him out of the way with her wing as she walked past. All he heard was kill her, and Starflight reeled, stumbling back with wide eyes. We have to leave now, he said, as soon as the big dragons were gone, whirling to face the others. Kestrel's going to... she's going to kill one of us. Tsunami jumped, and Sunny squeaked, a protest dying on her tongue as Starflight shook his head. Clay, he said, beckoning the mudwing over. Help me melt the chains. Tsunami blinked in surprise. How? I had a dream about it, Starflight shrugged. Maybe it can work. Tsunami pulled back from the heat, stretching the chains as Starflight and Clay worked together to melt them. 
Once free, she sprung forward, snarling, We'll leave tonight, echoing Starflight's earlier statement. Wait, Sunny said desperately. Can't we try talking to them? What if- No, Gloria said harshly. Starflight's never wrong. We have to go tonight. No telling what might happen otherwise. Starflight thought about his dreams of the sky and wriggled with the first thrill of excitement. The river, Tsunami said. It has to go somewhere. I'll follow it out. By yourself? Clay asked, sounding pained. I can- No, she said. You might drown. It has to be me. The dragonettes argued in hushed tones for a few minutes longer, hashing out the plan together. Tsunami left as soon as they decided on the smoke signal, insistent that the longer they waited, the more danger they were in. Gloria faded out of sight soon after. Even if he hadn't heard anything about it, they all knew who the Guardians were planning on hurting. Starflight went to sleep to wait for Tsunami and dreamed about red dragons and the flash of gold and sunlight and sand. Everything went really wrong after that. Starflight was sitting on a rock spire in the Skywing Kingdom, bathed in darkness, all alone. Everything kind of went wrong. He knew Clay and Tsunami were somewhere else in the circle. He didn't know what had happened to Glory and Sunny. He missed them. He was afraid to go to sleep. Starflight didn't know what his dreams would be like once he did, but he didn't think they'd be nice. It was cloudy tonight. He knew the moons were out, but he couldn't see them. He fell asleep anyways, even though he did his best not to. Starflight woke up because of the noise. He sat up suddenly, bewildered, wondering if there were 30 dragons screaming in his ears. But he was all alone, still. He looked around wildly before freezing. The voices were in his head. Mind racing, Starflight realized he was mind reading just like he used to when he was little. He could hear all the dragons close to him. They were so loud. Why? Why could he suddenly hear their minds again? Starflight inhaled sharply, looking up. The sun was shining cheerily now, but the previous night... Had he ever been in the moonlight before? Had he ever been outside at night before? Tsunami was always happier when she was in the water. Could he be meant to be in the night? He was a Nightwing, after all. Maybe that was a dumb idea, but why else would he suddenly be able to use his powers again? Starflight closed his eyes, trying to block out the noise around him. He could already feel the headache starting, like he used to get when he was younger. That night, after the horrific fight in the arena, Starflight didn't dream about a dragon with fire in her claws. He dreamed about Glory, draped over a tree, sunny in a delicate golden cage and he dreamed about dozens and dozens of glittering black wings descending and blocking out the light. The next day, the fire dragon from the arena came and asked him about... History? I... I'm sorry? He asked, confused. History, she repeated as if he were slow. Your mudwing friend said to ask you. Clay? Starflight yelped, and sure enough, amidst the cacophony of voices in his head, he clearly saw a picture of Clay. Yeah, she said. Starflight swallowed, trying to ignore the pulsing in his head. If he said no, would she get mad and set him on fire? I... I mean, I know a little bit, he said weakly. The fire dragon's name was Peril, and apparently her mother was Kestrel. And now she was helping them escape? Sort of? Is she for real or no? Tsunami whispered to Starflight, letting Clay and Peril hurry ahead. So far, he murmured back. I... it's hard to pick her voice out. There's a lot of noise. Keep listening, Tsunami said. I don't trust her. Peril glanced around carefully before telling them to wait. Starflight stiffened as he heard the thought, maybe... maybe she's right after all. We have to go, he said quickly. I heard Peril. She's gonna betray us. What? Clay exclaimed sadly. Sorry, Starflight said, hunching his shoulders. I, I just... I heard her. Never mind, Tsunami said, brusquely. Where do we hide? This way, Starflight whispered. He led them through the halls until they found a quiet alcove to hide in. Starflight shifted nervously, waiting for the uproar. There it was. Voices, both aloud and in his head, roared when Scarlet found out they'd escaped for real. We have to get Sunny and Glory, Tsunami hissed, wriggling impatiently. We need- Wait, Starflight hissed. She won't expect us to come back for the others. 
She'll take her guards and leave. Burn doesn't come until tomorrow. What? Clay asked. How do you know that? Starflight shook his head, confused with himself. I... I have dreams, he said. They always come true. I think they might be some kind of prophecy. Like Marosir's, only really weak. But they've been a lot clearer since we escaped. I bet it's the moon, Tsunami said after a moment. I bet your powers got weak without the night. Starflight shifted again. I thought so too, he admitted. But I'm not sure. They were quiet for a long time. Starflight waited until he hadn't heard anyone's mind near them for a while. I think we're safe, he whispered. But go carefully, and if I hear anyone, we have to hide. They crept back to the feast hall, where Sunny was hanging in her cage, abandoned. Clay was able to melt the bars alone. They were thin and delicate. Clay, Sunny whisper shouted, flinging herself into his wings. She looked to be on the verge of tears. I thought you guys escaped. Not quite yet, Tsunami smiled, brushing her tail against Sunny's. Starflight swallowed, unable to stop listening to Sunny's thoughts. She'd been worried they'd leave her behind. We wouldn't have, he blurted, without thinking. We wouldn't have left you, he said. Sunny tilted her head, looking at him. Did you... read my mind? she asked. Yeah, he said. My powers are back. She grinned. That's awesome! Can you find glory? He swallowed. I don't... There's nobody around here to read, he said quietly. Sunny shook her head. There's guards down the hall, she said. Maybe you can sneak up behind them and read their minds. I can't just sift through them, he said, shaking his head. They have to be thinking about her. Tsunami shrugged. I can do that. Starflight caught a glimpse of her plan. Basically, just to shout, Oh no, the rain we escaped, and then follow the guards there. No, he said, hiding a smile. Terrible plan. We are not doing that. It'll fail terribly. Is that a prophecy? Tsunami asked, tilting her head. Common sense, he shot back. Then how do we find her? Clay asked. I don't need finding, came a disembodied voice from the other side of the room, just as Starflight felt the new thoughts in his mind. Glory! Sunny whisper shrieked again. How'd you escape? Tsunami demanded happily, as Starflight turned over the Rainwing's quiet mental presence in his mind. Glory shrugged, looking a little shameful. Those chains were like paper, she admitted. I was just waiting for a good time. And the sun was nice. Starflight noticed how bright her scales were, wondered if it had something to do with her environment, like his own new abilities. We need to go, he said. They could come back any time. Yeah, Tsunami said, with feeling. What about Peril? Clay asked plaintively. She chose her own path, Tsunami said, pulling him toward the door. She's not your problem. Clay looked like he wanted to argue, and Starflight didn't have to be a mind reader to know that he disagreed. But he followed her out of the palace and towards the river below. And that'll wrap this up. I have a lot of thoughts on how this would go. A lot of booked... A lot of plot twists would be ruined, and the books would definitely be very different. But for now, I'll leave it at this so the video isn't super long. How did you guys like this interpretation of the idea? I think Starflight would have pretty good mind reading and weaker prophecy powers. But I also think that, like Clay and Glory, being kept away from the moons his whole life would eventually make those powers pretty watered down, only for them to resurge once he got free. What do you guys think? Would he have more powerful mind reading or prophecy powers? Do you think exposure to the moons affect the power level at all? What else might change if Starflight went through the story with these powers? Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my other what ifs if you did. Check the description for links to my socials and for inf check the description for links to my socials and for information about my program and whatnot. Thanks so much for watching and please have a wonderful week. Inside lane, missing exits, include to the pavement, between the lines, I'll keep my gate straight ahead.